In our last video, I gave my top five performance and design reasons I'm gonna buy a Rivian. But today, I wanna to take a step back and talk about another reason to buy a Rivian. In fact, for me, it's the main reason. And it might be for you and other EV enthusiasts as well. So, stay tuned. We've seen a lot of great stuff coming out from Rivian this month. Some great reactions from a test drive event for some very lucky reservation holders and a very encouraging letter from RJ Scaringe pointing out that Rivian is on track to start deliveries of the R1T in September. But before we go too far down this road, where I'm sure we'll have lots of stuff to drool over, let's take a step back. In the last couple of weeks, I've been reminded of why I care about EVs in the first place. Here are some numbers to think about. Estimates say we humans emit around 37 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. That's 37 gigatons. That's around 74 trillion pounds per year. That's trillion with a T. Just to put that in perspective, if we pack that much carbon dioxide all together, it would equal the weight of over 411,000 fully loaded US aircraft carriers every year. Yes, that's over 400,000. Yeah, it's hard to get your head around, right? For millennia, we have never had more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. And a huge chunk of that has been added since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in 1850. And remember, a lot of this stuff doesn't go anywhere but up into the atmosphere. It accumulates year upon year, and when it does, everything inside gets hotter. And there's no question we're seeing the effects of that. Last month, July 2021, was the world's hottest ever recorded. Is this a fluke? Well, you decide. The last record it broke was in 2016, which was tied again in 2019 and again in 2020. 19 of the warmest years on record have occurred since the year 2000, including every year since 2014. Now this is all scary stuff and it's tempting to just try and ignore it, but for many of us, climate change is hitting too close to home and becoming impossible to ignore. This was a forest near my family cabin in southern Utah that was destroyed by the runaway population of bark beetles that thrive in the new warmer weather, which by the way, kills trees. And the dead trees are just standing kindling waiting to burn. And every year it seems this problem gets even closer to home for me. This summer, while working on some of the dad in Rivian Dad, I took the family up to Winter Park, Colorado for some fun. This was also the area of one of Colorado's mega fires last summer. Well, I'm standing in the middle of devastation left behind from last year's East Troublesome fire here in Colorado. It's pretty tough stuff and it's a little sad. I mean, it's peaceful and calm here, but at the same time, nothing but standing dead trees. The three biggest fires in Colorado history were all last year. And of course, it's not just Colorado. Here I am in South Central California, midday, on a family trip just a few days ago. And no, those aren't clouds, that's smoke from two of the largest wildfires in California history. It's like being on the surface of Mars. And this mega heat wave is helping to cause a mega drought. Lake Mead, the largest man-made lake in the US, is at the lowest level since it was filled in the 1930s. Lake Powell, the second largest man-made lake in the US, and one of my favorite playgrounds, is at 32% of capacity. And where do those lakes get most of their water? From the Colorado River, which starts not too far from my home. This is all pretty awful, and we haven't even touched on bigger hurricanes, flooding, and lots of other problems. So look, our world is literally on fire. We've got to do something. For ourselves, and certainly for the next generation. Doing nothing is just not an option. We already know where we're headed, so let's change our direction. Just to be clear, the goal is to do two things. First, we need to electrify our transportation. And second, we need to generate more electricity from renewable sources, whether that be solar panels on your rooftop, or a cleaner electricity sector. Doing both of these things together will be a huge step. It's not all doomsday. We can start now to solve these problems or at least lessen the effect. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah do it. See you later. Uh, 
There we go. For a lot of us, the performance, technology, and specs of electric vehicles are enough of a reason to buy one. But let's not forget why EVs are here to stay. In the past, we've always thought of conservation as a trade-off. But with a Rivian, we get a vehicle that's not just a better performer, but one that's also better for our future. At the very least, it's a step forward, so let's take it. Thanks for watching. Coming up, we'll dig into some of the amazing reports coming out of the Rivian test drives. We'll see you in the next video.